where we meet in an hour of change and challenge, in a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance. The greater our knowledge increases, the greater our ignorance unfolds. Despite the striking fact that most of the scientists that the world has ever known are alive and working today, despite the fact that this nation's own scientific manpower is doubling every 12 years in a rate of growth more than three times that of our population as a whole, despite that, the vast stretches of the unknown and the unanswered and the unfinished still far outstrip our collective comprehension. Space travel is one of the most impressive and budding industries in the 21st century world. With the rapid development that is occurring and the great amount of potential for years to come, it is a crucial part of scientific exploration on the international stage. Characterized by private corporations and the new mission of getting humans to Mars, space travel is an American-dominated industry packed to the brim with some of the world's smartest and most ingenuitive minds. But space exploration didn't always consist of private companies and highly funded national space forces. And the history of how it became what it looks like today is a story of rivalries that shaped not only the world's most popular technological industries, but also international relations. Once I had decided that I wanted to study space exploration during the Cold War, I had to develop a research question. At the beginning of the process, I had to decide between two main research questions. How did the Cold War fuel the space race, or what caused space travel to evolve from a national race to a commercially dominated industry? After determining that I wanted to stay in the Cold War era rather than the 21st century, I chose to examine how the space race impacted the relationship between the Soviet Union and the United States, and this remained my research question for the entirety of the project. From this research question, my thesis statement went through multiple stages. It was initially too vague and included aimless claims such as different perspectives on the same set of events and new nationalism. After recognizing these faults, I altered the thesis statement to focus more on what led to the space race and how it ultimately altered the relationship between the US and Soviet Union. Ultimately, in my final thesis statement, I simplified the claims and arranged them in an order that was most similar to my body paragraphs historical context, the moon race and territorial sovereignty, and space race treaties, all culminating in a final statement about how the space race altered the U.S. and Soviet Union's relationship for years to come. In the middle of the 20th century, the U.S. and Soviet Union were the world leaders in technological advancements. Throughout the Cold War, their common goal was spreading their ideology to the entire world fueled competition in many industries. The USSR's launch of Sputnik shocked the world and terrified many citizens in the US. For the long-lived empire source that was the USSR was abruptly replaced by a scientific world leader. In response to this, John F. Kennedy challenged his space force to land a man on the moon before the decade was over. However, because of the USSR's early success in Sputnik, as the space race continued throughout the 50s and 60s, they remained slightly ahead. But both nations were determined to win and establish themselves as the world's technological leader. So they increased funding and citizen support by creating nationalist propaganda. Ultimately, after having great success throughout the Apollo and Gemini space missions, the US took huge leads in the space race. 
Their success in the space race, along with other industries, led to a U.S. victory at the conclusion of the Cold War. At the turn of the century, the conflict that was once an intense, even battle between two major world powers was no longer. And as the USSR's weakened economy resulted in the collapse of communism, U.S. capitalism became the most prominent ideology in the world. The space race unites three of our course themes from this year. History and context matters, war and conflict, and political ideologies. The space race is rooted in international conflict that dates back to the First and Second World Wars. To put it simply, the Cold War never would have happened if it weren't for World War I and II. Furthermore, the emergence of two completely opposite ideologies in these two rival nations fueled that conflict and motivated both the U.S. and USSR to improve their national support and preserve their ideology. Lastly, the Cold War was fought in a very different way than any other war prior to it. Rather than engaging in physical combat, the U.S. and USSR sought to best each other through industrial advancements. This new style of fighting, although very different, still resulted in significant changes in society and culture, and just like a physical war, ultimately altered each nation's government and territory. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too.